It's episode 26 of Fab Life with Lauren and Lee, and I'm missing a Lauren. Yes, yeah, she's gone off at long last to her well-deserved honeymoon. As I speak, she's no doubt knee-deep in martinis and being her usual fabulous self, celebrating her truly fab life. So, this week I'm joined by a guest host. They've kindly stepped in and filled Lauren's heels. And this week we're talking theatre. Theatre mishaps, favourite types of theatre, and you won't believe this, there's not one, but two Scylla stories. So let's crack on with episode 26 of Fab Life with Lauren and Lee. Welcome to episode 26 of Fab Life with Lauren and Lee. And, uh, well, it's half of the episode today in terms of uh, Lauren and Lee, because Lauren, as many of you will know, is off on her honeymoon. She got married. She got married in December, as many of you know, but when we were in tier four. uh, And then she's had like a post-wedding wedding. wedding, um, And now she's on her honeymoon. So... This week, I have scoured through my contacts <laughs> and uh, decided to have a fabulous guest host. And uh, she has kindly stepped in uh, to help us out. It's the one, it's the only, it's Nadia Sawala, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! And very big shoes to step into, Lawrence. I have to say, your podcast is brilliant. Oh, Do you remember when you were you. getting all that press attention and you could hardly leave the house? Darling, oh. I couldn't leave. Oh, oh I couldn't. I was, I, was, I was buying black sunglasses, <laughs> a, a shawl. <laughs> it really, really made me laugh when you did that. You have to follow Lee on Instagram because he's just... He's such a hoot. He could post a bit more. I have to say, you're a bit lazy. I am a bit lazy. but You sometimes... are very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much. Um, no, but I was going to say, um, when I was thinking, I thought it has to be you because you are actually, you're, you're the first guest host of this podcast. And I'm sure there'll be many others when I can't make it or Lauren can't. But you were also the first podcast that I did with my um, podcast before let's talk with Lee Peer. You oh, were you were my first ever I guest. I was, I was, and we did it in my dressing room in Loose Women. The days when you could have someone visit your dressing room; those days are long gone, and I don't know if they'll ever return. Oh, they will but surely. We had so much fun in my dressing room. Yeah, we did <laughs> dressing room, <laughs> but now we're doing it virtually. I'm sat we in my are. dining room. You're at your house over in in London town. Um, but thanks for doing it. Yes, we um, this. So I, I was I was explaining to Nadia beforehand that this podcast has a very loose theme each week. We try and stick to topic, but we never do. Mm, it's basically <laughs> it's just you a don't gossip. Have to go off on one you and Laura sometimes. But I love that. <laughs> my friends some, like will ring me sometimes and go, "You never finished that story." And I'm I'm yeah. Like, oh yeah, sorry, we moved on to something else. How are you anyway, Nadia? Thanks for doing this. How, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. If you only you could see where I'm sitting, I'm in my. I'd always wanted a room that was like a cupboard, okay. you know, a walk-in cupboard. Right. What walk-in do they call wardrobe. it? A walk-in wardrobe. So when my daughter, my eldest, moved it moved out of this room, I nabbed it, and I had dreams of living like Kim Kardashian. Well, I've got all the cupboard and everything, but it's still a total shit hole. I've got clothes. I'm literally, they're all over the chair, they're under my feet. I just, and I, so just coming in here this morning, I just thought, what the hell is going on with my life? When am I ever going to get organised? Probably never. But it's my daily, it's my daily mantra. When are you going to get organised, Nadia? So when you ask how I am, I'm in the fog of my own mind as ever disorganised, falling from one meeting to another, never quite being prepared enough, which I think would probably be perfect for your podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, it's very, very on brand. Although I did want to say, it's not really a mantra, the question, when will I get organised? <laughs> That's not really... A, a mantra is something like, so live the life you love. You or something love. Like yeah, it. it's true, actually. A Maybe man- I, What could I have as a mantra then that would actually help me? Um... What is it? Tidy house, tidy mind? Oh, see, that makes me feel a bit unwell. 
<laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it gives you anxiety. Well, that's really positive. Yeah, it gives me anxiety because it gives me a purpose. It gives me something to work towards. So you just like the question, <laughs> an open-ended question that never gets answered. When... Exactly. I think, because I think that's the problem, Nadia. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. But it's interesting, isn't it? It's so interesting you picked up on that. Because what I've done is left an open-ended question, which... I have had my entire adult life. I've been asking the same question. And obviously, if I'd wanted this question answered and I'd wanted to change my life, I probably would have gone for a proper mantra rather than a non-mantra. Yeah, so you're just comfortable with it being slightly chaotic. Yeah. I, when you've come round, I tidy up and I don't let you upstairs. I didn't let you upstairs, You didn't, did I? no. See, you you were thing. like, that's out of bounds. That's like the forbidden. Yeah. But that yeah. made me want to go up more. It was like, I know, Ooh. it always does once my everyone to go up. But you just couldn't because you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to stay. But I'm a bit, <laughs> I can be a bit cluttery, but there does get to a point where I then have to, t- like I tidied my room yesterday and I felt nice. I lit a candle. Oh. Like, are there any, are there any like areas of your house that you always have to have tidy where you're like, okay, that has to stay tidy or is it just no oh no but the thing is what's so amazing is when you like you just saying I tied to my room and lit a candle and I'm like oh god that sounds so lovely because I love it I love those moments but they only last I could spend an entire Sunday clearing up the house and within an hour the place is a tip I mean we were talking this morning on my coffee morning on YouTube and and somebody mentioned my um vlog on YouTube where I'd been away for a weekend with my friend Lisa she'd gone to have she'd gone in to have a shower we'd gone into this hotel room she came out of the shower and the entire hotel room was a total tip and like people have just been asking how did that happen Nadia and when I say I don't know I really don't know like I turn around and I go it's like somebody came in and possessed the room and did something and I've got no awareness of it I used to say this to my mum and she didn't used to believe me when I was a kid but it, and I do think that is my ADD oh you can imagine because I know we were, t- we're going to talk about theatre today and in my dressing rooms were the same I mean it was just so stressful sharing a dressing room because I knew it was really um you know disrespectful to have a messy area um, not with everybody, because a lot of a lot of actors I met are quite similar to me, actually. But trying to keep a dressing room tidy if you're sharing one was a nightmare. Well, a thing with the, well, a thing with that as well is if it's quite a manic show, sometimes you run into your dressing room, you throw your things on the floor, and then you run out on a quick change or whatever. But That's I... my everyday life. <laughs> I've just realised I live my life like I'm in a quick change situation. Like the other day, Kiki, my youngest, came. She went, "Mum, the room. It's just." Mum, it's the worst I've ever seen it. I said, where, what, where do I go wrong, Kiki? Should I've seen you through the door when <laughs> she, oh you're trying God, she's things on? Out. She's doing research. <laughs> yeah. She goes, and I've watched you. And when you're going out, you try things on and they don't want you throw them on the floor and you throw them on. She goes, and you don't even know you're doing it. It is. It's like a quick change. I think also because when you're overweight, I can't just ever just go into my cupboard and go, oh, I'm going to wear that. It's a sunny day. Because it might have fitted me the day before and it won't fit me the next day. So there's nothing. That's why I always have to take so much away with me if I go away because it depends what I can go from a 12 to a 16 through a week. So I need like a I need like a lot of different things or a lot of just tent like things that can go on no matter what I've eaten for lunch. But it's interesting as well because you're not um you would think if you were like that that you would also be late all the time. You're never really late, are you? You're like It's very funny, isn't it? That's the only box I don't tick for ADD is that I am not late because because I I find it the height of bad manners. I Maybe. really, really, I really... Two of my very close friends, Lisa and Kay, are always late and I hate it. Well, I maybe really hate it. that's why you're always manic in terms of getting ready and stuff because you're worried subconsciously that you're always going to be late and you're like, nope, got, you don't have time to... Well, I think that is often... I mean, often the case when I leave here... Like, it's Armageddon. Mark Wood says he'll come down sometimes and I've gone out before him and he's just looking around the kitchen. He can't believe it. Like, there's multiple bras hanging off chairs. There's knickers on the table. There's just... And I, and I have left the house 
absolutely sweating, you know, and just I would never think, oh, my God, I haven't put the stuff back in the fridge or I haven't done this. I haven't. Like a lot of people will before that. I mean, Kay and Lisa will leave a very organised home and be a bit late. I will leave chaos for my family to show off that I'm always on time to my friends. I love that. I will. I throw them under the bus. I will leave chaos and destruction for my family. <laughs> but God forbid I ever turn up it's a minute late. late. Yeah. We, uh, as you know, this podcast is uh, turning into an unofficial uh, Cilla Black fan club. Mm, um, I know. I don't know how it really happened. Neither of us mm. do, but it just kind of happened um, <laughs> throughout the time. And and people have been uh, messaging. We got a message from one of our listeners um, saying he was on a flight with Scylla and he told this amazing oh. um, story about uh, when she told him she told him apparently that she never booked first class because the, they'd always just give her an upgrade anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to ask, have you ever met the legend that is Scylla Black? Well, before I tell you that, can I tell you a story about Scylla Black on a plane? And this was oh my, my God, uncle yes. was on a plane with her <gasps> going to Spain. You are not going to believe this and you're probably going to love me forever. Oh, my God, I'm dying already and I don't even you know what it is. You can't even imagine what it is. She was sat with her chip pan on her lap. What? <laughs> yes. With jellified lard, like hardened lard. I... Sorry. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm... She brought her chip pan with her to Spain. Now... My uncle, who's from Lincoln, he, he, he's, there's nothing like his chips, nothing, nothing, nowhere in the world. And he all uses the same fat over and over again. And like wherever we went in Lincoln, when I went to stay with him and his wife, everybody's chip pan was the same. And the chips were like nothing I've ever tasted. I can still now, the joy, the memory of it. And something often ha obviously happens to the fat over a period of time. But anyway, she was there with her chip pan on her lap. How did they let her take such an appliance on board? Well, it wasn't an electric one. It was one that you put on the gas. Oh, right. OK, so, so I was... So it was solidified thinking... lard. No, it wasn't electrical. Oh, come on. Well, that's what electrical I was thinking. Electrical chip pads <laughs> in a black. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen a... I've never seen a non-electrical chip pan. <laughs> oh, my God, you're so young. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the old-fashioned chip pan with a basket in it. I'm going to find it. And the it. thing is, you can't find them. Everything, you have to plug it in. And I love an old-fashioned chip pan. In, certain, in fact, sometimes I use a colander in a, in a saucepan to try and get that feeling because I don't want it at constant heat electrically given to me i want to like keep adjusting the gas so she's but i think they're just so dangerous aren't they she's going on a flight to spain and obviously it's like i want my own chips i want the own taste of chips so yeah. i'm taking my, my own oh my god she is... well i think she had a well she had a place there didn't she wasn't yeah. that sadly where she died so i suppose if you're going for the whole summer you're going to need your chip pan aren't you well, yeah, I mean... Chips on the veranda with a nice glass of champagne. She had the money. Couldn't she have just bought a different chip pan? Or is it that thing where it's like, no, it has to be this chip pan? I think it was probably something to do with the fat. Right. So <laughs> who knows? And who even knows if this story is true? But it was a story I was always told when I was a girl, the story of Scylla Black and her chip pan. Well, I don't and I, think... And I like to believe it because I think it's a great story. I mean, my other story, why I said champagne is um, I used to be in a show called, oh, God, what was it called? Second Thoughts on ITV. And the rehearsals were done in, um, I don't know if you know it, just by Kennington. There's the big ITV rehearsal rooms. Yeah. It's also where the National Theatre rehearsed. It's a great building. And you've, you've, you don't, it was always really annoying because I always wanted to bump into the National Theatre actors, but you never did. But you would bump into other shows because they would rehearse the big Saturday night shows. And I presume, though I'm probably wrong, that it would have been Blind Date she was rehearsing for. Mm. And, you know, it was the sort of place where you were lucky if you got coffee, do you know what I mean, from a vending machine. But there was this fridge, there was this fridge that we always wondered about, this fridge and it had a lock on it. Anyway, turns out this fridge was Scylla's fridge. And in this fridge was champagne. And the story was that whatever time Scylla arrived, there would be champagne. And Scylla would drink champagne throughout. Love it. And um, I never really knew that this was true. And then one day I saw her in the rehearsal rooms. And it was, I don't know, about 11 o'clock or something. And she was prancing about with a glass of champagne. So I was like, oh, 
It is true. She drinks champagne all day and all night. Um, yeah, but she had a locked fridge of her own champagne. Well, she knew that if that fridge wasn't locked, then, you know, the National Theatre actors. actors, the actors want to get... The it. actors, darling. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, also, talking of theatre, you, you mentioned earlier, um, we are... This is the topic for, for this week. We're talking theatre because... I always think back to when just before the the pandemic, and we do try and avoid that at all costs on this podcast <laughs> talking about it. But we were meant to go and see the musical Six, and we still. Oh, haven't when seen are it, we going to do it? Because I've got the tickets. The money is in waiting. <laughs> the money is in waiting. It's in a vault. It is waiting. I bought to be... them, so I didn't yes. want to take the money back because anything that I booked with theatre, I just let them keep the money because I figured everybody needed. But it means we still have tickets, Lee. So we've got to go. <laughs> we will definitely go. I've actually seen it twice. Well, you know, that's the story. I've told you this story before and it kind of made me check myself a little bit because, you know, I love musicals. I'm very stagey. Um, mm. And uh, it was actually Kay, Kay Adams, who recommended mm. this musical to Which me. Which I can't believe. Cannot believe. And no. she'd seen it in the Edinburgh Fringe in like previews mm. where it, and she said, oh, have you, have you seen this musical called Six? I can't do the accent. That's <laughs> and, giddy. That's really giddy. Giddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I've never heard of it. But I was mm-hmm. kind of like... If I, I remember haven't... that whole thing because I remember you being in deep shock because we always come to you mm. at Loose Women for recommendations. And I remember finding you stumbling down a corridor just looking quite unwell. <laughs> yeah, it was. Lee, like, Lee, are you okay? <laughs> Kate just recommended a musical that I didn't know about. I'm not exaggerating. But by the end of that day, you had tickets booked and you were there. Yeah, and I was still like, this won't, this won't. At one point, I remember thinking, it won't even be a musical. There's probably just one song in it. Like, do you know what I mean? I was like, it'd be rubbish because Kate said it's good. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) because I've never heard of it. Like, it was more that. Anyway. And this was back when it was, like, not popular. I got tickets for £10 on the front row. Now you can barely get tickets. Oh, my God, it's it's sensational. And it made me... It just makes me remember how much I... Because I actually went to a theatre last week. I went to an actual theatre. And get this, we were not socially distanced. Can you believe? Me too, last weekend. (gasps) What did you You see? You went to see Anything Goes, didn't you? Yeah, so good. Oh, was it fantastic? I could see you as a bit of a Reno Sweeney. Have you ever seen it? Anything goes. Sing, sing me a little bit of the main song. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on and something da, 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 But, da, but da, listen, da. she... Trouble is I can't sing. She does this, <laughs> when, and you've, you, she doesn't just sing, she tap dances, and she does this eight-minute mm. tap dance number, which is unbelievable. Really? And then she belts it out at the end, standing ovation. Oh, I've got to go. I've got to go. Um, I'll take my big sister. She loves the musical. But did you do, before you went into TV, did you do a lot of theatre? I did. I, I was a proper, that's why I always say, I still to this day, years, decades later, can't believe it when I go out my front door and there's a beautiful car waiting to take me to work. Yeah. That people say, oh, do you want a cappuccino from Soho House or from Starbucks or from thing or that? Because that's where all my roots were from bumping around in the back of some dreadful van doing some terrible show. I did proper, proper fringe. You know, I was, I was, um, you know, up and down the country you know, profit share, which basically meant you never got paid anything because there was never any profit. <laughs> there was only ever deficit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and there was I loved only it. ever deficit. <laughs> I love that. There was, there was, and I mean, I was lucky enough that my <clears throat> parents used to give me like thirty quid a week for food, and um, that's how it used to work. So, but I loved that. I really, genuinely loved it. You know, for years. I was, they called me, that in fact, I remember um, the, uh, the head of the BBC Daytime saying to me, you are the jewel in our crown of daytime. And I was on a golden hand cuff deal with BBC so that every single um, BBC Daytime show that came up, I was offered it first. It was just, it was just unbelievable amount of work. And um, I always say that all that, 
all that trekking around for fringe uh, theatre actually really stood me in good stead because honestly working for daytime BBC is very like that you know you're shoved here shoved there you know? mm. there's no niceties there's no makeup there's no running to get you a coffee it's graft 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 so for the first 20 years of my career was very very hard work everywhere I used to I mean all my BBC daytime shows I would work I would I never work less than a 13 hour day never um and I was used to it from from trekking around. Do you, um, I had a moment, actually, this was in school, I was doing a school play, um, and it sticks with me to this day, because I have a load of, I have random fears uh, when I've done theatre before. And one of my big things, actually, it's not just theatre, but it's on stage. I have this thing where, especially in stand up, if I was ever emceeing, um, I, if I was introducing the next comedian, and I sometimes used to get this at Loose Women, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say, I'd have to say Joe Bloggs, for example, is coming on. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, please welcome, blah, blah, blah. And my, in my head, my head would be irrationally saying, his name's not Joe Bloggs. <laughs> it's honestly. Questioning. Honestly. Everything. So I would, and, and sometimes, and this, sometimes it would get so bad that I'd convince myself I didn't actually know the person's name. So what I would do is I would get the audience to uh, clap and applaud so loudly. So I'd be like, please welcome her son. And, 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 and to make it sound like they just didn't hear what I said. And I actually, weirdly, talking of Lauren, last week, um, Lauren and Freddie, I had I'd introduced them on and they cut the cake and they had this lovely um, knife, vintage knife from her grandma, Audrey. And Ooh. I remember saying it's grandma Audrey's knife. And afterwards, my mind was going, it's not Audrey. The name's not Audrey. You got the <laughs> name wrong. And I got it right. But that's one of my fears. But the other fear is falling over on stage because I have done this before. And oh, I fell God, over what some... Happened? I was in a production of Sweeney Todd at, um, <laughs> at school and it was like a panto version. And there was, I was like this Italian assistant who assists <laughs> Mrs. Lovett. And um, someone hadn't cleaned up some rice. It, the previous scene, there was like a, a magic trick and he put the hat over and a load of rice fell out the hat. I mean, <laughs> pure magic. Um, <laughs> And so Cooked ha- rice or raw rice? Because it would make a big difference on how you would fall. Um, I think it was raw. I don't think it was cooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, definitely raw. <laughs> You're um, rolling on it. <laughs> it's actually weirdly still raw to me. And it happened years ago. Um, but there's a video. I'll try and find it and I'll post it on the Instagram. Honestly, I fall Please flat do. on my face over this oh. rice. Because I'm trying to... The, the pie machine goes wrong. So all these pies start flying out of the machine. And I'm meant to be catching them. And I fall over. <laughs> Honestly. Then I have to do a solo. And I'm like laughing throughout the solo. <laughs> Please, please promise me the next time you see me and my girls, you tell them that story. They will love it. Kiki's still laughing from your last stories that you told us. Oh, gosh, yeah. You have the best things happen in your life. You really do. Oh, but I feel your pain. I mean, you've probably heard me tell this story on, on Loose Women, but I had a, I had a, I had a, well, a similar sort of thing, except I wasn't able to laugh because I was crying. I was literally crying. <laughs> I was in a show. It was one of my fringe theatre shows. Um, and um, I I was playing a bit of a, a bit of a like yeah she was a bit of a tart a bit loose you know and uh, tart with she, I heart. was sto- tart with the heart and I was or every time I came on or off stage I would stalk across the stage in these heels flicking my hair wiggling my hips and the previous um, scene the guy had been eating a Chinese takeaway and he has to hurl the Chinese takeaway across the stage and you know the stage hands come and clear it up but unfortunately on this particular show they left a solitary pork ball a uh, prawn <laughs> ball and um, I'm very particular about my foods and um, so I was doing my striding across the stage and my my oh. stiletto heel went into the prawn ball <laughs> and I went flying up backwards but landed on my stomach and was very very winded and because it was fringe theatre and it was very very small I literally landed at the feet of the audience and you know when you're winded and you're like you can't breathe you can't breathe I was that bad so like tears rolling down my face with audience I could smell their breath they were that close looking into my face with such pity 
Anyway, I was had to be carried off the stage because I couldn't breathe. They changed me into my next outfit. I came in in the next the next scene. So we missed that scene. <laughs> we just missed it oh, out. You just didn't do it. <laughs> yes, I didn't. They had to drag me off. And so the next scene, I'm pregnant. And but I'm supposed to be happy, but I play it like I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> the whole show is a mess. But 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 honestly. I mean, at the end of the show, I wouldn't leave my dressing room until every single person had gone from the bar. Because when I'd come out to get my to, to, to do the bow, they gave me extra applause and it was pity applause. Oh, yes. And nothing gets me worse than pity, I tell you. It's the worst thing you can show me. So then for about, oh, my God, I had such bad stage fright after that that it must have been a good year that every time the phone rang, I was the only actress across the globe that would say, if it's for me, if it's my agent, I'm not in. Oh, no. <laughs> because I had such stage fright. I'd humiliated myself to, so, you know, and at that age, you just feel so everything so keenly, don't you? Do you know what? I've just remembered, um, and I'll finish on this story. I, we were, I, I'm going to paint this picture here because honestly, mm-hmm. it still makes me laugh and I know you're going to laugh. You, you you won't know what I'm going to say, but all I'm going to say is you and Diamond, oh my <laughs> Andrea God. McLean, and I can't remember who the other person was. Linda. I think it was Linda Robson. Linda, Linda Robson. Robson. It was her that I was with. Dressed as Abba. So we're in we're in the studio of Loose Women, and um, <laughs> we've got we. <laughs> I can't. We'd got the audience in early to um because because Linda, you, you and Diamond and Andrea were gonna perform as ABBA. There was some ABBA tribute that you were gonna do. So you <laughs> come waltzing out as ABBA. Hilarious. Me, me and Linda were the two women, yeah. the two and Andrea and, and Diamond were the men. I'll never Benji forget. Benji and Benny. I'll never forget Anne Diamond with that moustache on on that piano. Oh, the thing God. with Anne Diamond was, <laughs> I used to like, I didn't really know Anne that well. And, uh, but she, when she ever did like the little sketches, she would she'd be throw brilliant. Herself in. She'd throw yeah. herself into it. And so she's on like the keyboard. And I remember, anyway. Uh, one of the floor managers, Jack, he is amazing. If he's listening, we love you, Jack. Jack. We it's love just... you so much. One of the best human beings ever, and he's like <laughs> running around, and it's all chaotic. There's dry ice and everything, and something <gasps> happened where he had to cue someone on, and <laughs> Jack ran through, and didn't he? You saw it. Yeah. You saw it head well, on. Well, we were singing. We were actually doing the rehearsal, me and Linda, and we had Matthew. What's his name from um, Stars in Your Eyes? That What's was it, name? Matthew Kelly. That's why Matthew we're Kelly it. was sat right in the front row, <laughs> and we were do, like trying to do it really properly. And we see Jack down the end, and he's in a bow tie as well, wasn't he? Yeah, and he always. ran in the air. <laughs> he went fly. You know, one of those falls. One of those cartoon <laughs> falls. It was a cartoon fall, like you know when someone <laughs> slips on a um, banana peel. Banana skin. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. And he went flying up and he almost was held at two feet for a split second and then crashed down on the floor. Meanwhile, Linda and I are singing, knowing me, knowing you, (laughs) right? And we start to laugh and we cannot stop. And then I wet myself right in front of Matthew Kelly. I actually actually did, did. though, didn't you? It was awful. (laughs) It was awful. And what but we a can still a drop of that. <laughs> what a tribute! She I'm herself. sure if you, I'm sure if you go online, you'll be able to find a clip of it. That was oh, when we yeah. did it actually on air. But um, and Anne Diamond looking stupendous as Bernie or Benji, hilarious or Bertie. <laughs> it was so funny because she was so into it. I don't think Anne had even seen it because she was just nodding her head on this yeah. keyboard. I never, and the yeah. keyboard was like one of those children's keyboard. If I yeah. remember that, right, just banging it. But you know, but you know, the best advice that I ever got from a director was: be prepared to make a fool of yourself, or you will make a fool of yourself. So if you do these things half-heartedly. Yeah. You will look worse than if you just throw yourself into it. Um, and so, yeah, we certainly threw ourselves into that one. Well, Jack certainly <laughs> threw himself into the floor managing that day, quite literally. God love him. We love you, Jack. <laughs> we really, and also, talking of performances and Jack, I'll never forget you doing that choir performance. Can you remember? 
Gareth Malone. Are you bringing that up? <laughs> the worst thing ever on television, ever. Did, well, it was awful. Wasn't that on Love of Huns? You know, that Instagram account, oh, Love of God, Huns. Well, it needed to have been. I mean, the next day i mean we were just absolutely slated everywhere oh, no. and but we but what what people didn't realize is we were all at an event the next day me and the loose women and we were just reading them all out to each other crying with laughter <laughs> yeah that i mean it true. was you so insulting the, <laughs> the write-ups were so insulting we were how but the only thing that i felt better about was i knew we were shit from the <laughs> beginning <You did. laughs> I'll never forget that. I'll never forget someone coming up after the rehearsal going, oh my God, it sounded amazing. Producer. You were, like, you were like, don't. Don't lie to me. <laughs> and I will never forget Jack. No, I went, I've been in this business a long time and I know when something is shit. Yes. <laughs> and I'll never forget Jack, bless him, coming oh, yeah. up to me going... Um, we've had a note from the gallery. And yes. um, could you ensure that the audience don't give the ladies a standing ovation just for <laughs> just for camera shots? And I went, <laughs> we'll tell them I will doubly make sure, but I don't think we've got anything to worry <laughs> about. We'll, we'll hold the audience back from so, giving them yeah. a stand ovation for something that's going to make their ears bleed. <laughs> I was like, we can't guarantee a standing ovation. I can't guarantee maybe them walking out, standing up yeah. and walking <laughs> Oh, it was great. We, I do oh. miss work. I can't oh, wait for those days you. to be back, actually. Um, the um, the show, I don't know if you saw me the other day on the show, I said that right down to camera saying, we're missing you. We are. Mi oh, no, it's something to come out. You will see it. I do a little we're missing you to the audience down the camera because we do miss them and we miss you and we miss the specialness of that atmosphere. I mean, yeah, you know, it's great that we're back on air, but oh my God, it's a different show with you there and the audience there. Wow, the atmosphere. Oh God, I miss it so much. It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah, it's a waiting please game. God. Nadia, please thank God. you so much for guest hosting today and telling thank your Thank you, I've loved story. it. I appreciate it. Um, and um, can I just correct you? It was a prawn. A prawn, a prawn, sorry. And your rice was raw, not big. <laughs> True. Don't forget, food is everything to me. Can I just say, your voice is so beautiful. Oh, my God. It's like liquid you. chocolate. It's I it. love listening to it, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> not when I get excited. I was going to say, um, you have, you have you, your podcast galore. You've got Confessions of a Modern Parent podcast. Mm. I'm right in saying that, aren't I? Mm -hmm. You've got How to Stay Married uh, So Far, if you want to yeah. check that out. That's on all your podcasts. And of course, you have a YouTube channel, um, the Sawala Adelis. So uh, yeah. Nadia is like content galore. I'm like <laughs> the other end where it's like one podcast a week. That's I'm what so I keep lazy. saying. You're very lazy. You're very oh, talented yeah. and you're very lazy. You're not putting enough out there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I enjoy your content and I want to see more of you. Oh, well, wow. I'll, I'll start. Uh, Nadia, again, thank you so much. This has been episode twenty-six of. Actually, well I'll teach you this. This is how we. This is how we um, sign off. So what I'm going to say is, I'll say this has been episode twenty-six of Fab Life, and then you say with Lauren and Lee, and then I'll say but with Nadia. Okay, okay. here you go. Okay. <clears throat> thank you so much, Nadia. This has been episode twenty-six of Fab Life. With Lauren and Lee. But actually, not Lauren, Nadia. All right, bye. <laughs>